Hello and welcome. This is the lecture three, our video, the one that discusses one-way ANOVA post hoc testing. Um, so we're going to get started, uh, bring in a new script. I'm going to arrange those. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is load a package. Um, the package we're going to load is Agricole. Um, if you don't have it, you're going to have to install it the usual way over in packages, install packages, etc. Agricole is not the best. Um, it's not the easiest. It's definitely not the only, but it is one that we're going to use for this video. Uh, so I'm going to load Control R and everything over here on the left seems to be working well. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to import the video or I'm just going to type in the video, uh, not the video, the data. Um, so it's again it's L count, log count of the meat bacteria. Again these are log counts, not the actual counts themselves. There's four levels. I'm going to define the variable package to make it as a factor. So if we really want to look at this we're going to do a C bind of package and then L count. Just to make sure everything lines up nicely. Notice that the package is actually an integer. And the package is an integer because it's a factor. Uh, so 766 goes with plastic wrap. Um, 698, 780, those are all plastic wraps. The rest are all vacuums, and then CO2s, and then mixed gases. Now you may ask, why is it in that order, the way that I just read it? The one corresponds to the one that has the lowest letter uh, in the dictionary, the, the closest to AAAA, and four is the one that's farthest. So it alphabetizes it. Let's go ahead and get used to some of our data just to find out what it looks like. We're going to um, look at the uh, group means. To do that, we're going to look at the. We're going to use the command aggregate. Uh, aggregate acts on a numeric variable, and it divides or partitions that numeric variable into some sort of partitioning. Um, here, we're going to partition based on the plastic uh, on the on the package type. And then you apply the function, or you specify the function that you want to apply to each of those L counts within those packages. So running this, we see that the average, the mean, the mean L count uh, for the CO2 level is 7.26. The mean log count bacteria for the mixed gases is 3.36. The mean l log count of bacteria for plastic wrap is 7.48, and and for vacuum is 5.50. So these would actually be the uh, X bar sub I, I'm sorry, the Y bar sub I's. So the 7.28 is the Y bar for CO2, and the uh, 3.36 is the Y bar for the mixed gases, etc. We can get the overall mean just by using the mean of L count. So the Y bar dot dot is 5.9. Now the next thing we're going to do is actually start the modeling. Now that we've got a feel for the data, you know what? I want to look at a box plot. Looking at the data is always a good thing. So I'm looking at this data and I'm thinking, hey, there definitely appears to be a difference. It looks like CO2 and plastic wrap are pretty high. It looks like vacuum is in the middle and it looks like mixed gases at the very bottom. So when I'm done with this analysis again, I would expect mixed, mixed gases to be significantly lower, vacuum to be significantly in the middle, and these two, I don't know what to expect from them. So here's our modeling. Again, it's an AOV. AOV is for analysis of variance. Dependent variable, tilde, independent variable. And then we'll just do a summary of mod 1E. and we get the partial analysis of variance table. Note that there are 12, in, in, there's 12 measurements in our sample. There's four groups. Since there's four groups, the degrees of freedom for the package is 
4 minus 1, or 3. Total sample size is 12. 12 minus 1 is 11. So if total degrees of freedom would be 11. And then the residuals is just 11 minus 3. Sums of squares. 0.93 is the sums of squared errors, what the book calls SSW. The mean squared, so the mean squared error is 0.116. The F statistic is just the ratio of the mean squared package to the mean squared error. That's 94.58. It's very large. The p-value is very small. It's less than alpha for any realistic alpha. Therefore, we reject the null hypothesis that these are all the same. That's all we get from this. We reject the null hypothesis that these are all the same. But the real question is, which are different? And in the, uh, the chapter, we talked about four different ways of determining which are different using uh, post hoc testing. We looked at the Fisher's LSD test, Tukey's HSD test, Duncan's multiple range test, and Shafay's test. And I'm going to show you how to do all of those here. Um, so Fisher's LSD test. The function is LSD, all caps, dot test. What information you give it, the first bit is the dependent variable. The second thing you give it is the grouping variable. The third is the mean squared error. And this mean squared error is this mean squared error way down here. And the last thing you give it is the degrees of freedom for error, the DFE, which is this 8. So this is the core test. Now, in order to get any information from it, we have to print. And this is a, a quirk of the Agricole package. We have to wrap it in a print statement. So when I run that whole line, I get everything kicked out here. So it gives me the statistics. It will actually calculate the mean. Critical value, there's the mean squared error. This LSD is the least significant difference. So if the sample means differ by this or more, we are going to conclude that they are significantly different. It actually does that down here. It comes up with the mean. So the 7.26 is the mean <coughs> L count for CO2. Calculates the standard error. R, which is the number of replications. This is the little n. The lower confidence limit and the upper confidence limit and then a min and a max. And then here's the grouping. And when you read these, this last table is the most important because it lists the treatment, the sample means, that second column not too important, and most importantly, this final column is the grouping itself. And now here's the most important part about this. When two treatments share a letter they are not significantly different. So for instance, in this case, CO2 and plastic wrap, we did not detect a significant difference between these two levels. We are unable to conclude that CO2 is better or worse than plastic wrap. We did not detect a difference. However, we did, did detect a difference between the plastic wrap CO2 group and vacuum because they do not share a common letter. Plus, we did detect a difference between vacuum and mixed gases because they don't share a letter. So we can conclude that vacuum has a lower mean, and by mean in this case, I mean mu, has a lower mean log count of bacteria than plastic wrap and CO2. And mixed gases also has a letter all by itself we can conclude that mixed gases have a lower mean, again, mu, lower mean log count of bacteria. So since we want less bacteria or fewer bacteria, we would conclude that mixed gases is the best of this group.
because it has the lowest and it is significantly lower than any of the others. We could also conclude that plastic wrap or CO2, we can't tell which, but it's one of those two, is the worst of the group. Again, because they share a common letter, we cannot distinguish between the two in terms of their population means. But they're both worse than anything else. So we can conclude that one of those two is the worst of this group. So the function is lsd.test. It requires the dependent variable, the independent variable, which is also the grouping variable, the MSE, and the degrees of freedom for error, the DFE. Now here's an interesting question. How did I get 0.11585 for the mean squared error? And if we look at the ORANOVA table, it just comes up to be 0.116. Here's how. This is an ANOVA table. Since it is a table, then we can access every single one of these cells in terms of its row and its column. So if I want the mean squared error, if I want that full value, it's going to be row number two, column number one, two, number three. It's going to be row two, column three. So I'm going to plop this back here. And it's going to be row two, column three of the summary that we did. Not of the model itself, but of the summary, because this is spit out by the summary. And technically, it's of the summary of the first element in its list. That really doesn't mean too much right now. But realize that if you want to access any cell in this table, you're going to have to start it off with summary of the model and then left bracket, left bracket, one, right bracket, right bracket. And it's always going to be left bracket, left bracket, one, right bracket, right bracket. So when I run this, control R, I get the mean squared error more precisely. If I would like the mean squared uh, between, that's going to be row 1, column 3. So I would change that to a 1, comma 3 instead of a 2, comma 3. So the mean squared between is really just 10.9576, which gives us another another decimal place. Degrees of freedom for residuals, it's going to be row 2, comma 1, and those are 8. So if I want to, so if, and this is a big if sometimes, if I want to program this completely, I can call this MSE as a variable, I can call this DFE as a variable, run those two, then anytime I want the mean squared error, I can just include MSE. And anytime I want the degrees of freedom error, I can just include DFE. So I could instead write this as MSE and DFE. And we'll get exactly the same results. Okay, so next is no longer Fisher's LSD. It's going to be two keys, HSD test. Packages may not be consistent between packages, but they tend to be internally consistent. So if Fisher's LSD test is LSD.test, two keys HSD is probably HSD.test. And that's exactly what it is. And again, you do have to give it the dependent variable the independent variable, the mean squared error, and the degrees of freedom error. And when we run that, we get the uh, two key HSD results. Got the mean. This is the overall mean. Got the CV, the MSE. Here's the HSD. So whenever the sample means differ by at least 0.889962, we conclude that those population means are significantly different. Similar, very, similar conclusion and similar thought process to the LSD. 
For the HSD again, for two keys, honestly, it's a big difference. If the sample means differ by at least 0.889962, then we conclude that the population means are different. So here we go. Here's the means, here's the levels, or the treatments, here's the grouping. And we read this in exactly the same way that we did with the, uh, the LSD test. Here's the LSD test results. They actually look very similar. Here's the HSD test results. Levels that share a common letter are not significantly different. So again, plastic wrap and CO2, we did not detect a difference between them. Vacuum, we did detect a difference between it and anything else. Mixed gases, we did detect a difference between it and anything else. Mixed gases have the lowest average log bacteria count and plastic wrap or CO2 has the highest. This grouping down here should be exactly the same as the grouping with the LSD. Not because the LSD and the HSD tests are equivalent, but because the way that it's presented is treatment, means, and then grouping. And the groupings are the same between these two in this case. The groupings work this way because the HSD is 0.8899. These two levels differ by at least 0.8899, so they're different. These levels differ by at least 0.8899, so they're different. These levels do not differ by 0.8899, so they're not significantly different. Next one is Duncan's multiple range test. I'm just going to copy and paste because Duncan multiple range test. So the function is no longer HSD test, it's Duncan test. Isn't copying and pasting wonderful? Again, dependent variable, independent variable, mean squared error, error degrees of freedom, output's going to be the same, or at least the same structure. Critical ranges, we had to calculate these by hand in the lecture you just watched. Here they're given to us. Here's the grouping table. Now, the grouping table does not necessarily, for the Duncan test, does not necessarily have to look like any other table in terms of the groupings, this last column. It just so happens that the, the groups here, that, that the treatment effects are so different from each other or so similar to each other that the groupings are going to be the same for, out for all of these tests. Um, so here's Duncan's multiple range testing. Again, plastic wrap and CO2, since they share a common letter, do not significantly differ. Mixed gases is different from everything else, and it's the best. It's the lowest number of bacteria on average. And the last one was Chaffe. What am I going to do? Copy and paste. Yeah. S C H E F F E. And instead of calling it Duncan.test, it's going to be called Chefe.test. And the output's going to have the same structure. We got the critical difference up here, and we would have calculated this by hand. In fact, I think we did calculate this by hand. So any means that differ by as much as that critical differ, they are significantly different. If they don't, then they're not. Again, plastic wrap and CO2 do not differ by at least 0.97. Vacuum differs from everything else by at least 0.97. Mixed gases differs from everything else by at least 0.97. Therefore, everything we've said before is the same. Mixed gases are significantly better than everything else. Plastic wrap and CO2, we can't detect a difference between the two of them, but they're, one of the two of them is the worst, and everything else is better than both. So here are the functions to do that post hoc testing. And again, let me refresh your memory. You do post hoc testing if you do not have any pre-planned tests. If you're just getting into this and you're exploring the data and you've discovered, hey, there's a significant difference here, 
you would do post hoc testing to determine what that significant difference was. Which of these four should you use? Well, you should never use Fisher's LSD test. Everything else is better. If you care most about simple null hypotheses, then you would choose one of these two. If you have a complex null hypothesis, then you would use Shafay's test. I actually haven't shown you how to do complex hypotheses with Shafay's test, because we're going to deal with it in contrasts. And actually, that's it. We're kind of done with this. I could go through another example, but you could also just rerun the script, uh, rerun the video from the beginning. So we've got four ways of doing post hoc tests. We can use Fisher's LSD test. We don't want to. Tukey's HSD test and Duncan's multiple range test. And if we've got complicated hypotheses, we could use Shafay's test, but I recommend that you wait until we get to um, the contrast, which will be lecture four, I believe. So that's the end of this. I hope it was helpful. Take care.